Hi, we are now going to learn one of the most important topics in mathematics that is trigonometry. Trigonometry gives us a very powerful tool for solving problems in geometry, in the motion of objects, in forces, in astronomy, calculus. In fact, almost every branch of physics and mathematics involves trigonometry. So, we need to understand trigonometry deeply because that is going to be helpful in lots of different places. Now, the basis of trigonometry is similar triangles. So, let me quickly revise the concept of similar triangles. Just by looking at these two triangles, you can see that these two are similar. But looking is not enough. So, what makes them similar? Ah, their corresponding angles must be equal and their sides must be proportional. What does that mean? If I look at this angle and that angle, they must be equal. Similarly, this angle must be equal to that angle and this angle must be equal to this angle. And what does it mean that sides are proportional? If this is A and that is A1, B, B1, C, C1, then A by A1 is equal to B by B1 is equal to C by C1. Okay? So, that means the sides are proportional and their angles, corresponding angles are equal. Now, this is true for any two similar triangles. But in particular, when we talk about trigonometry, we are interested in similar right triangles because trigonometry is built on the concept of similar right triangles. So, let us focus on right angle triangles. Okay, So, I have one right angle triangle here, another right angle triangle here. What do you think? Do they look similar? No, they do not look similar. They have 90 degree, 90 degree, one of the angles. Well, you can see that this angle is equal to that. But just one angle being equal, corresponding angle being equal is not enough. Is this angle equal to that? No. What about this side? This side is equal to that. But that does not mean that these two are similar. Just by looking at it, you know they are not similar. right? This angle is clearly not equal to that. In fact, suppose I now draw another triangle like this. Here, this side is equal to this side. You can see that. If I just bring that down, you can see it. But that does not mean that these two are similar. In fact, just by looking at it, you can see that this angle is bigger than this. So, these two are not similar. On the other hand, what about these two? They look similar, right? These two look similar. Just by looking, you can't say, well, you can say this is 90, this is 90, but here also it is 90. In fact, for all right angle triangles, one of the angles will be equal 90 degrees. This angle must be equal to that. Suppose I look at this and say this is theta. If I lift it up and move it there, if it matches, does it match? Yes, it matches. So, this angle is theta, this angle is theta. So, basically this angle and this angle, they are equal. These two angles are equal. What about the third one? Of course, they must be equal because the sum must be equal to 180 degrees. So, two angles are equal makes this triangle similar to this triangle. Okay? So, two of the corresponding angles are equal. For all right angle triangles, one of the corresponding angles will be equal. So, the other angle is equal. This is theta, that is theta, that makes this similar. In fact, if I draw a third, even smaller triangle, right angle triangle with angle theta, you know that this is similar to these two. So, we can conclude that all similar right triangles have the same angle theta. Okay. Well, they also have the same 90 degree right angle because they are right angle triangles. So, non right angle theta, they have the same non right angle theta. And we can take this in converse. We can say all right angle triangles with the same non-right angle theta must be similar. So, if you draw right angle triangle with one of the non-right angles being the same, then they are all going to be similar. This is going to be very important because similar right triangles is the basis for trigonometry. So, please remember that just the angle theta, each angle theta is actually specifying a whole range of similar right angle triangles and that is what we are going to use to define trigonometric ratios. Let us now define our very first trigonometric ratio which is called tan theta. We know that all right triangles with the same angle theta, they are similar. So, I am going to draw three different right triangles here with the same angle theta. So, they are all similar. Okay? Now, the longest side is called the hypotenuse. Now, if you look at this angle theta, this side is exactly opposite to theta. So, we call this side the opposite side. And what about this one? Well, this is adjacent to theta. So, we call this the adjacent side. 
Now you might argue, but the hypotenuse is also adjacent. Yes, you are right. Hypotenuse is also adjacent, but it already has a name hypotenuse. So why waste one more name on it? So we say adjacent side is the one that is adjoining the angle theta, but it is not the hypotenuse. So this is called the adjacent side. The opposite, there is no confusion. That's exactly one side that you can see that is opposite. So for this triangle, the opposite side, let us say it was P1 and the adjacent, the length was Q1. This triangle is similar to that. So can you say that this will also be P1? No, they are similar, but they are clearly different in sizes. These are a little smaller. So this one, the opposite side is going to be, let's say P2. This fellow's adjacent is Q2. And for this small triangle, the opposite is P3 and the adjacent is Q3. Now you know that these triangles are all similar. For similar triangles, you know that the sides are proportional. So you can say P1 by P2 is equal to Q1 by Q2. But that you can flip around and write P1 by Q1 is equal to P2 by Q2. And that way we can extend it to the third one. And we can write P1 by Q1 is equal to P2 by Q2 is equal to P3 by Q3. Just focus on this. You can see that P1 by P2 is Q1 by Q2. If you flip the relationship, you will get what I have written. So this is a good way to write it because P1 by Q1, both of these quantities belong to this triangle. P2, Q2, both quantities belong to this triangle and P3, Q3, both belong to this triangle. So each of these ratios, you can see that this ratio is for this triangle, this ratio for this triangle, this ratio for that triangle. Now, P1 by Q1, it clearly doesn't depend on Q1 or P1. Why? Because here Q2 is smaller, P2 is also smaller, but it has the same ratio. So if you see the ratios are the same for the three triangles. But what is the same for the three triangles? Angle theta. That is what is the same for the three triangles. So we can say that opposite by adjacent, opposite by adjacent, opposite by adjacent, this ratio depends only on the theta value. So this ratio only depends on the angle theta. It doesn't depend on this length or this length. It depends only on the angle theta. Since it only depends on the angle theta, we can write this ratio as a function of theta. We call this tan of theta, tan theta or tan of theta. I want you to keep in mind that tan theta does not depend on whether this was Q1 or that was P1. It doesn't really care about the size. It depends on the angle because suppose I had a smaller triangle with the same angle, you will get the same ratio. You will get a different value for P2, you will get a different value for Q2, but you will get P2 by Q2 being the same value. So tan theta will be the same whichever triangle you pick. Tan theta depends on theta. That's why we write it as tan of theta. Now I want you to note that tan theta is not tan into theta. You are not multiplying tan and theta. That has no meaning. Okay. Tan theta is a single term. Okay. Tan theta is a function of theta. So when we say tan theta, we are saying this is a function of theta. It depends on theta. And it's a very specific function. So we give it the name tan. Why the name tan? The name tan comes from tangent. We will later see why and what is the relationship between tangent and tan. Okay. So right now, just remember that tan theta is the opposite side by the adjacent side. Okay. So opposite means exactly opposite to angle theta. That is the opposite side. Adjacent, of course, is the one that is adjacent to angle theta. So opposite side by adjacent side, that is tan theta. In some books, you will find that this is called the base. That makes sense if it is horizontal. And then this is called the perpendicular because it's going up vertically. And so people write that tan theta is perpendicular by base, perpendicular by base. Now, while that is okay to write when the triangle looks like this, this being horizontal, suppose I take this triangle and tilt it around a little bit like this, right? Now, this is not, can't be called base. Now, how can you call this the base? It is not horizontal. So, this, you shouldn't be calling it perpendicular. You should still call it opposite. It's still exactly opposite to theta. And this, you can still call it as adjacent. That's why I prefer to call opposite by adjacent as tan theta. Okay. So, I will continue to use opposite by adjacent. Though, you should remember that in certain books, you may have perpendicular by base as the definition for tan theta. Now, suppose I look at the triangles. 
Do they have to look like this with the angle that way? Not required, right? You can have a triangle that looks like this. Is the right degree angle? Yes. Is this a right angle triangle? Yes. So, this angle is theta. Okay. So, what will be opposite to theta? This. So, this is the opposite side. Let us say it was P. This, this is the hypotenuse. You can see that, right? Opposite to 90 degrees is the largest side. That is the hypotenuse. I don't care about that. This is the adjacent side, right? So, this is the adjacent. Let us say it is Q. So, for this triangle, what will be tan theta? Tan theta will be opposite by adjacent. So, P by Q. So, opposite by adjacent P by Q will be tan theta for this triangle. Okay. Now, what can I do using tan theta? Well, if I knew Q, Q into tan theta will give me P, right? Q into tan theta will give me the value of P. Similarly, if I knew P, P by tan theta will give me the value for Q. So, that means if I knew tan theta, then I can find P if Q is known. I can find Q if P is known. Now, you can say that's all nice and fine. But for that, I need to know tan theta, right? So, how do I find the value of tan theta for different values of theta? That's what we are going to do next. Let us now find the value of tan theta for different angles. The first thing I am going to do is to draw a circle with radius 1. And at this point, I am going to draw the tangent to the circle. Now, you know that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So, this angle must be 90 degrees. Suppose I want to look at tan of 20 degrees. What I will do is I will draw a line like that, which makes an angle of 20 degrees with this original line. Okay. So, this angle is 20 degrees. So, from the point where it goes and intersects the tangent, I am going to draw this line and I am going to measure the length of this line. So, let us say I measure, don't worry about the scale, okay, this is an approximate scale. So, using the scale, suppose I measure and I find out that this length is 0.364 in the same units that this was 1, okay. So, if this was in centimeters, this is also in centimeters. Then, using that, I can find out what is tan of 20 degrees. How? Because you see, this is a right angle triangle. So, for a right angle triangle, tan of 20 degrees must be the opposite side by the adjacent side. So, we can write tan 20 or tan 20 degrees is opposite by adjacent 0.364 by 1. So, 0.364, right? So, tan 20 degrees is 0.364. So, then we can write down a table with the angle and tan theta, okay? So, when angle is 20 degrees, tan theta is 0.364. Now, it does not matter whether this was a small triangle or a big triangle because for all triangles, tan theta only depends on theta. It does not depend on the size of the triangle. Okay. I found out what is tan 20 degrees, right? By measuring this length. Suppose I want to find the slightly larger angle, let us say 30 degrees. What do I do? Well, we will increase the angle. So, suppose I increase the angle and let us say it is now 30 degrees. Now, this 30 degree line, right? It goes and intersects the tangent. So, now what is the length of the tangent? How do I find out? So, let me drop this line and we want to find out what is that length. Again, we use a scale and we measure this and we find out, let us say that it was 0.577. Okay, 0.577, that is the length of this line. So, if you now look at this triangle, tan 30 degrees will be opposite by adjacent. So, that will be 0.577 by 1. So, tan 30 degrees will be 0.577. So, we can then put in a table that for 30 degrees, tan theta is 0.577. I can similarly increase the angle and say 40 degrees. So, suppose I make the angle 40 degrees, go and see where it intersects, drop this line and let us use the scale to measure the length of this line. And so, once I measure, I find it is 0.839. Okay. So, then tan 40 degrees will be opposite by adjacent. So, 0.839 by 1. So, 0.839. So, we can write down 40 degrees is tan theta is going to be 0.839. So, you can say, should we only go 10, 10 degrees? No, not necessary. Suppose I say, now I want to increase it by 5 degrees. So, I am going to say 45 degrees. So, for 45 degrees, I look at what is this. This length turns out to be, if I measure it, you can see this length is 1. Wait a minute, 1? Yeah, why is it 1? Well, think about this. 
this is 90 degrees, this is 45, so this must be 45. So, this is clearly an isosceles triangle. So, if this is 1, that must be 1. So, it has to be exactly 1. So, we can then say tan 45 degrees is 1 by 1, 1. So, we have got the tan theta value for 45 degrees. So, tan 45 degrees is 1. I can keep doing this for various angles, right? So, suppose I say I move it up a little more and I get 53 degrees, then I can look at this length. Right? This is the length of the tangent. I am going to use the scale to measure it. And when I measure, it turns out to be 1.327. And so, tan 53 degrees is 1.327. So, I can write that down. I can keep doing this for various angles. Right? So, suppose I go a little further up like that. So, my tangent's length I have increased. Now, I am going to make this angle much larger. Let us say 72 degrees. You can see as the angle keeps increasing, this length is going to become longer and longer, right? So, that is the length of the tangent that I need to measure. I am not looking at the infinite tangent. I am looking at where this point intersects the tangent from there to the original point. So, how do I measure this length? Again, we can use a scale. So, using a scale, if I measure this, let us say this turns out to be 3.077. Okay. Now, with the scale, when I am measuring, I am not really measuring because the scale was not accurate. But when I am saying this is 3.077, that is correct. If this is 1, this will be 3.077. So, that measurement is actually correct. So, tan of 72 degrees will be 3.077 by 1 and therefore, tan 72, 3.077. So, you can do this for clearly every angle, right? So, we can measure the length of the tangent for each angle theta. And using that, we can make the table of tan theta values. Okay, So, you take any angle you want, go and see where it goes and intersects, draw this, use a scale to measure the length and use this calculation to figure out what is tan of that angle. So, you can do that. Now, of course, I haven't done this for every angle. It's going to take a long time, but people have worked on this very carefully. And so, doing this for every single degree, they've got this huge table of tan theta values. So, tan of 0 is 0, tan of 1, 1 degree is 0 0.0175, 2 degrees is 0 0.0349, etc., etc. So, people have made these big long tables with this kind of a process. Now, you should also do this. It's a very useful exercise. Maybe not for so many angles, but at least for a few angles, you should do your measurement. Of course, when you do this, you can't use 1 meter because it's too long. You can't use 1 centimeter because it's too small. Okay, So, maybe you should use 10 centimeter. Means of 1, think of this as 10. Then whatever length you get, you should divide by 10. That's all. So, whatever length you're measuring in centimeters, divide it by 10. Same idea. Instead of using 1, you're using 10 for a decent uh, length. right? If you want to use 1 meter, you can. But 1 meter is going to make a very large circle. So, on a paper, try and use 10 centimeters and then divide by 10. But you are again doing the same process. So, you are measuring the length of the tangent. And because you are measuring the length of the tangent, that's why we call this value tan theta. Tan theta is the short form for tangent of theta. So, tan theta comes from the fact that you are calculating the values by measuring the tangent's length.